So in the first decade or two of the uh, 20th century, we have the beginning of what we might call, uh, even today, modern art. Mainly um, art that does not aim for realism, that is increasingly abstract, that is uh, concerned with uh, form and color, uh, and it re even if it comments on reality, it reworks reality very, very thoroughly. And um, the first modern group, a short-lived group, but still, in Britain, uh, to uh, introduce uh, abstract art and uh, this, this new way of modern art was the group called the Vorticists. And the leader of this group was a man called Wyndham Lewis. Wyndham Lewis, he was a, uh, a young artist, uh, particularly um, rebellious, uh, although as um, in one of those BBC miniseries, mini uh, he is described to be a rather unpleasant character, uh, and especially um, especially before the uh, the war, he um, he displayed some really unpleasant uh, characteristics like uh, anti-Semitism and, and so on. Although, well, uh, you don't really see it in his art uh, uh, because what he uh, believed. Uh, the function of the art to be was to uh, bring out the new world and the new world for uh, young rebellious artists such as the Vortices was the age of the machine. This is the 20th century, the age of the machine, well the automobile is uh, there to stay, the factories, the cities and um, so the art should follow the example of, uh, of uh, um, technology and become the glorification of, of the machine. Uh, Wyndham Lewis um, uh, published or tried to publish a short-lived uh, uh, magazine called Blast uh, and uh, if you look at his works, especially his early work from the period before the outbreak of the First World War, uh, they look very modern, they look very abstract uh, we have uh, bold lines and kind of geometric shapes and uh, uh, bold use of colors. And if we look closer, if we really take uh, uh, notice, uh, uh, you can see that he is uh, abstracting the reality of city life. Uh, so you can see uh, the, sk the um, skyscrapers, you can see the streets, you can even see some people who are also abstracted, who look like little robotic figures, like little mechanical, um, geometrical figures. So if we look at uh, some of his works, um, especially the work called The Crowd from uh, 1914, so just before the war, uh, it's... Uh, quite interesting because uh, you have to really look close to find the people who make the crowd but uh, you can see the uh, office buildings you can see the streets uh, you can see um, a little tiny character waving a red flag so probably this is the flag of revolution and uh, if you watch the documentary i think it's in the british masters uh, they actually show a wonderful thing. They show a close-up of Wyndham Lewis, the crowd, and compare it with a very modern view of, a, of an office building and little figures of people working long into the evening. And uh, if you look at this uh, bottom uh, right-hand corner of the painting, it really looks if you, uh, if you pay attention, it looks like an office block with tiny little people working um, long into the night at their um, desks. So uh, probably uh, this is uh, really a vision of modernity, something that uh, would be uh, very abstract and perhaps uh, not understandable to the... Um, uh, to the audience uh, in the early decades of the 
20th century, but uh, in the 21st century, yes, this is the city uh, that we can recognize. Uh, another artist whose career starts around this, uh, this period is um, a young uh, Jewish artist uh, from a very poor background uh, called Daniel Bomber. Uh, this is quite interesting because all these uh, uh, all these artists basically knew uh, each other from uh, from studies. They all studied in a private uh, art school called Slade Academy. And uh, uh, if you watch the documentary, there are even photographs showing those uh, those young artists. So um, Bombak was uh, um, quite an experimental artist, uh, and he started his career, which was also longer than uh, just the period of youth and youthful rebellion. He started with um, uh, abstract art, he collaborated with the vortices, he later um, uh, got into some quarrel with Wyndham Lewis possibly about some Jewish matters and he, uh, he left the, uh, the group uh, and he never joined any other group, so he, uh, he experimented in some other directions. But if you look at his early work from the um, 19 teens, this is again very abstract, but it is abstracting something that is recognizable. Uh, one of the works, uh, one of the best works from this period is called Jujitsu. So we have uh, martial arts, we have, uh, if you really look closer, uh, you might see perhaps uh, a suggestion of the uh, athletes uh, fighting, uh, or it's just the movement of their bodies that creates a disruption in a rather geometric, abstract uh, work. Uh, full of uh, colors, full of uh, um, shapes, triangles and such. Uh, but uh, probably his best work from this period is called the Mud Bath. And apparently he was inspired by uh, Jewish bathhouses, kind of ritual Jewish bathhouses, uh, which uh, his uh, family, his friends and also himself um, frequented when he was young. Uh, and uh, what we have are, again, abstract shapes which could be recognized to resemble human forms. So people in a, uh, in a pool, uh, bathing perhaps, it doesn't really uh, look like mud, but uh, it's a kind of pool of red water, uh, but... Um, it also resembles a very jumbled Union Jack. So uh, it's been interpreted as a way that the immigrants, uh, like the, uh, the family of David Bomberg and his neighbors, very often immigrants from, uh, from Eastern Europe, uh, how they were trying to fit into the, uh, the British society, how they were trying to kind of um, steep themselves in Englishness uh, and to create uh, this kind of new identity based on uh, British national colours. So this is, this is something quite interesting and this is something uh, that puts Britain on the map of modern art uh, usually earlier than, uh, um, than expected, so right from the beginning. And then the war came and all these artists uh, uh, had to um, react to it and uh, both world wars uh, are the period of very um, uh, visible artistic reaction, artistic commentary uh, to what was happening. Uh, just as the war was starting, one of the artists uh, called Mark, uh, Mark Gertler um, made a very influential painting in a modern style, but it's not completely abstract, called the merry-go-round. And it shows like a merry-go-round at the fairground, but with uh, um, some groups of people going in circles, like um, people looking like aristocracy and people looking like soldiers. So it's like the history repeating itself over and over and over and now 
um, apparently, of course, uh, beginning the next cycle, the next bloody war. And uh, of course, if you know anything about um, about uh, uh, the importance, the cultural impact of the First World War on British culture, this was tremendous. This was much greater than uh, uh, the Second World War. Uh, this was really the end of an era. This was the complete end of a certain world and a certain um, way of life and a generation of uh, young, educated, talented people, many of them poets, lost their lives in this bloody conflict which uh, just a few years before seemed completely impossible because it was supposed to be the age of reason, this was supposed to be the age of civilization, uh, of um, the British Empire, and suddenly you have those European powers basically uh, killing uh, each other in a very mechanized way. This is important. This is not just any war. This is the mechanized war. This is the, uh, the machine war. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, even the artists that glorified the machine, like Wyndham Lewis, um, were uh, terrified, were appalled, and they started to, to react to that. So, um, we have uh, some of the works uh, of, uh, of Wyndham Lewis and uh, David Bomberg uh, uh, commenting on the, uh, on the First World War, uh, looking at the soldiers, uh, uh, in the trenches, uh, they went to fight, uh, so they uh, uh, they knew uh, what uh, was going on. They were absolutely horrified. Uh, uh, they could uh, see the, uh, the the horror of the trench war. So uh, we have um, works like Sappers at Work uh, by Bomberg or a battery sh a battery shell. Uh, by Lewis, um, uh, so um, they try to use the modern techniques, the modern way of painting, uh, but they were confronted with this great human tragedy. Uh, the old masters, or the, the adult masters, they were not yet that old, but they were uh, more established, like Sickert and even Sargent, uh, stayed at home, but they also responded to uh, to the war uh, because everybody responded to the war. Uh, Sargent uh, produced uh, one of his uh, late um, great paintings, uh, showing a line of soldiers uh, that had been blinded by the t uh, by the gas uh, used uh, in the war. So they they are like a traditional. Uh, image of the blind leading the blind. So uh, a symbolic image, but this time also made into a kind of uh, war uh, memorial. Uh, Sickert uh, uh, made a few works uh, showing artists uh, trying to uh, cheer up the, uh, the soldiers returning from the front. One of his best works from this, uh, from this period shows, uh, uh, again, a kind of cheap theatre or music hall in Brighton with some comics uh, um, entertaining the, uh, the public. Uh, he also painted a few works showing the work of uh, nurses tending to the wounded. So he used one of his favorite uh, uh, subjects, one of his favorite themes, the interior with a bed, it's kind of simple iron um, bed, but this time it's not uh, uh, any um, themes of uh, the lives of, I don't know, prostitutes or murderers or anything like that, but a military hospital with the wounded soldiers and the nurses. But uh, the war created some new um, artistic stars and we'll talk about them in a moment. 